Hey guys, Luton here. So with the upcoming Jets DLC, one part of that is of course a new drone. Now I'm not going to be showing you that drone right now, but what I'm going to be showing you is how to control a drone. Now this is something that I think very often uh, people don't know, they don't try and find out about it. I did make a tutorial about this in the past, but I thought today I'd make a very, very basic tutorial about how to launch a drone, get it up in the sky and actually use it to observe things. So let's go into the editor. So the first thing we're going to do is choose our map. So you're just going to go to Altis, click continue. And whenever I do these tutorials, I try to do it right from the very beginning stage because that's important. Now I'm actually going to talk through this in a very step-by-step -step manner because if you're making a tutorial, you've really got to assume that people know nothing. So in order to move around in the editor, you've got WASD for moving around. Okay, you can go Q up in the air or you can go Z to come down. You can use your right mouse button to turn and look around and that's basically your kind of movement controls. If you press M, that's going to move you up to the map. And then if you want to transport your camera up in the sky, as with Zeus, what you're going to do is move to where you want to go. We want to go to the airport here on Altis, and then we're going to click middle mouse. Okay, and then you press M again to come out of the map, and that brings you back to the normal view. Now we want to get UAVs on the ground. What we're going to use is our asset menu on the right hand side here, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and we're looking under men. We're looking under NATO and men in blue for. I'm going to choose UAV operator. I'm just going to left click. Then I'm going to place this guy on the ground also by left clicking. Then we're going to go and we want drones, okay? So we want our drones. So we're going to click here in this menu, left click again, bring down this drop down menu. We're going to go for drones and I'm going to choose, okay? I'm going to choose just a standard Greyhawk CAS, okay? So I put that down and there's our Greyhawk CAS. Now, if you want to adjust the rotation of this, what you're going to do is left click and hold shift, okay? So holding shift, left click, and then I can rotate and drag this object around in different directions. So I'm going to have him facing this way. And that's basically all we need to do at this stage to get our unit on the ground. Now just to give us something to actually look at, I'm going to go back to map and uh, we're going to try and focus on this little island down here. Okay, so I'm going to middle mouse, so we're back on this little island right here. And uh, again, just because this is a, a tutorial aspect, I'm just going to put down some standard blue four guys and maybe I'll put down our motorized anti-armor group as well. Now we're not going to shoot, but it's just to give us something to look at and again, I just want to highlight um, you know, sort of that the, the, there are things on the ground to look at there. So the next thing we want to do is actually go into the live game. So what we're going to do, there's two ways, you can either play scenario uh, or you can right click on your guy and go play as character, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here we are now in the game and this is in the editor, but again if you're on a server, very much the same kind of thing. So what we're going to do is go to open UAV terminal, just using the middle mouse scroll wheel. Then we're in the AV terminal. Now we're going to have to select our AV. If you have different drones, you can obviously select between them. Uh, so we're going to choose our Greyhawk right here. And we can see that it's set on autonomous, lights on, or whatever. You can turn those off if you want to. You can turn these things on and off. Stats normal, feel 100, weapon, you've got laser mark, designated batteries, GBUs. It shows our position. Um, it shows our speed and our altitude. We've also got uh, control of the gunner, which is when you can control the uh, turret, which we'll look at in a minute. And we've also got control driver. So to get this thing in the air, you can you can do it in an automated way, but I'm just going to show you the manual way to do this because I think it's easier and safer taking off and landing manually than doing it automatically because I don't trust the AI. Uh, so when you're in first person, it's the same. If you have third person enabled on your server, you can use that too. Um, I'll probably show you third person just so you can actually see the drone to take off with, but it's basically the same thing. Um, the actual takeoff is going to be dependent on your own key bindings, um, but it's usually pretty standard. You can also use, obviously, the scroll wheel, middle mouse scroll wheel to do engine on, flaps up and down, whatever. Um, but my start engine is Q, and then X and C are my... Uh, my turn controls here. I want to be a little bit careful when you're turning this thing. If you turn too quickly, because the drones are very lightweight, unlike a jet, they can actually sort of tip a little bit as they're going around a corner. So you really don't want to speed up. Uh, you would think that you can just like cane this thing around because it's pretty nimble on the ground. But if you're very quick to turn on a corner, you can actually damage, it can sort of lose its balance and then you can actually damage the hull, its weapon systems and everything when takeoff. So you actually want to be quite careful uh, when you're turning corners because as I say, when you've got them loaded up, they're quite lightweight and they will just sort of tip over to the left hand side and then it will damage your craft before it's even got off the ground. So you want to be a little bit careful. So now I'm just holding down Q, I'm just giving power to the engine and we're just getting and again this thing because it's very lightweight you can just start to flip. there we go push straight up into the sky and again then you can either scroll wheel to do your gear up or you can have it a uh, key bound which is right control g there we go see the gear loaded up inside and there we are now our little guy is up in the air 
Now again, I quite like the sort of manual control to get these things up in the air because I just like having that control there. Uh, and once we get up a bit higher into the sky, usually get up to about 500 meters or something like this, or three or 400 meters, and then I'll switch back, I'll let the AI take over control. So now what we're going to do is we're going to release the UAV controls, so we're going to release that out, okay? Now so our drone is just going into its standard kind of loiter pattern because I've not given it any commands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shift and left click, and that is now going to tell the drone, go to that point. Now what you're going to then do to give it further information, you're going to right click on that point, and then you'll get this, type behavior altitude. So first of all, altitude, I want it to fly up to about uh, 2,000 meters, uh, but we could go for high, but 2,000 meters is where you want to be safer. So it's going to start going up to that altitude. I also then want behavior, what do you want to do? Never fire, hold fire, hold fire engagement. So I'm going to have it set on never fire. Then I also want to have type, okay? So we're going to have, you can have move and destroy, seek and destroy, hold, sentry, guard, etc., etc. I'm just going to set it on loiter. And then you're setting the range of that loiter, and the loiter basically means the radius, okay, the distance in which it's going to loiter around that target. So I'm going to set that to 500 meters. So now the drone is trying to, what the idea is, is it wants to be at the altitude you have set by the time it reaches that waypoint. So the drone is automatically setting itself up to that altitude. Now another important thing is if you're flying high at an altitude of 2,000 meters, what you want to ensure is that your view distance, okay, your overall view distance and your object distance are set high enough so that if you're 2,000 meters in the sky, you can actually see that. If you were set down to like, you know, 1,000 meters uh, view distance or something like this, then you're not going to be able to see the stuff because you're higher than your view distance. So all you're going to see is basically nothing. Okay, now we can see our drone is still climbing up. It's taking a long time to get there because it's, it's had to go from about 500 meters up to 2,000 meters, which is really, really high. I actually really wish that there was a different height available because you don't really need to be more than, I would say, 1,100 meters in the sky. I had never understood why we have suddenly 500 or 2,000 meters. It's a huge jump between those two things, especially when it goes up like 20, 50, 200, 500, and then 2,000. I don't know why there isn't a 1,000 meter one or like 1,000 then a 1,500. I've never understood why that's not the case. So it's very irritating to me, but it is what it is, right? So now it's reached its target, you can see that it gets to that point and then it starts going automatically into its loiter. So now it gets out to 500 meters and 500 meters is the radius, okay, not the entire. So when it's 500 meters, that's not the, uh, the diameter of the loiter, it's the radius. So it's going to stay 500 meters from that point all the way around. So you can adjust that to be further if you want to. So now we're going to go, we can either control driver, but that will take us out of the control that we've set. What we actually want to do is control gunner. So now when we control gunner, it's going to stay on that continual point, okay? But it's also going to continue to rotate around. So we can just use our camera point right here, and you can see, look, that it will actually stay exactly where we want it to be. Now, what I can do is I can zoom in, just using the plus controls. And this has actually been improved reasonably compared to what it used to be because this thing used to go all over the place. When you would move this camera around, it would never stay sort of set on a position. But you can now see this, this has actually improved, I believe, since a couple of years ago where it really didn't work particularly well. But now when you actually sort of position the camera, like let's say we want to position the camera on these bushes right here, then you see I'm not doing anything, it just goes into an automatic lock state and it will just stay cycling around. Now of course we can also go into night vision and we can also go into thermals. So now we're in thermals, you can see but there are other guys down here on the ground. These are those units that we place down there. But notice how the vehicle is not visible because the engine is probably not running and it's also, you know, it's just not going to show up as a heat signature the same way as these guys are. So sometimes you, you can obviously go through your different thermal options as well. So this is like the reverse to the inverted option. And then there we are, that's our ground. So we can still see the target right there. Okay, so I decided to show you guys a slightly different situation here in order to show the best uh, use of the control locking method where you lock the camera on target. So this one right here, you can see I've set this as altitude is up to very high, okay, 2000 again. Okay, now this target, this drone, I've set him on at multiple waypoints in order to get to that position. So now he gets to this waypoint, he's now going to turn towards this. Now it's very easily done. Before we just showed to go from A to B and you just basically shift left click and tell it to go to that point. But this way, if you want to set a waypoint, what you do is hold left control and then you just left click again to set multiple waypoints. It's as easy as that. Now this guy is basically just going to his waypoint at the altitude. Now whilst we're doing that, what we're going to do, we're online with this one. Now this is our other drone over here. Now we can either just 
right click on this and go connect terminal to UAV you can actually do that or you can obviously select it from here and choose a different one so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go connect terminal to UAV and now this one is just doing its own thing and it's going on the path that I set it to and this guy right here is going to you know get over there if I want to connect to that you can see look he's still going on his path to where we said so I'm going to go over to this drone right here and again I'm going to get this guy in the air myself I'll show you from the first person view this time it's pretty much the same The other thing to note is uh, the right hand camera there, um, now or the right hand window. To cycle through that you can just set up a keybind for that and you can see right here look, that you can just cycle through to your map overview, you can have the camera or you can have your sensor, you can adjust the sensor for the distance, okay so a thousand meters, eight kilometers, you can see the other drones and markers actually on the sensor right there. Um, you can actually see that we've got, um, let's just get this going here. Um, yeah, if I cycle through on the sensor, you can see two kilometers, we see nothing. One thousand meters, we see nothing. Eight kilometers, hey look, we see our other drone, that's the green triangle. And then we see another target over there, there was a white target, well, what is that? Well, let's get over there. So I'm going to come out of this now, I'm going to go back basically to uh, gonna release UAV controls. Go back to this screen. Now again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to left control, left click. And that's going to send the drone off in this distance that I want to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send this guy around the houses basically. I'm just going to send him way over here. And uh, I'm just going to basically put him there. He'll just cycle around. I can set him at whatever altitude I want to. So I'm going to set him at an altitude of 500. And I'm going to set him at uh, behavior. Just uh, hold fire. And I'm going to set him at type. Uh, loiter so he's just gonna and a 500 meter loiter so I just set that guy on path and now we're gonna go back to the other drone the other terminal okay so now we're back in our other drone so now what we can start doing is looking around for targets maybe we've got to keep this area secure maybe we've got to uh, find enemy targets on the ground so we can obviously search to our thermal view and hey what's this now I search the thermal view and there's a vehicle actually moving. I see a vehicle down here and that is an enemy Ifrit. Now again, look at the camera. Okay, the camera is moving around but it's not staying on target. But hey, this guy's slowing down. Let's see if we can't lock onto this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold left control. I'm going to press T. And now look, now I've pressed left control and T. Okay, the camera is locked onto that target. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cycle to our laser marker and we're going to put laser on. So now we've got a laser target lit. Now all I did there, okay, was cycle through the weapon systems, okay, and again that's going to be dependent on your own keybinds as well. <coughs> so I cycle through to laser marker, and then it's just left click to turn the laser marker on and off. So now we're locked onto that vehicle as he's moving around, and we're just going to stay locked on. We're an altitude of uh, 1600 meters, and we're staying steady at 1600 meters. So we're just kind of cycling around following that target right now. So I can leave this drone, uh, I can just go release UAV controls, and that's basically going to stay lit on target. So now what we can do is we can take physical control again of this unit here. Now again, we can either go seek and destroy, I'm going to actually do this manually. Okay, so here we are in the other drone. Now we can see that if we pan around, this is the kind of area where we need to be looking for the other target. So let's turn back around this way, because we need to be heading sort of south. My drone, I've flown it overhead, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn, you can see on my radar there, the red mark, okay? Now as we come towards this as well, you can see that there is a white hashed line down there on the ground. That's the vehicle moving. Now what I need to do is put it onto manual fire, just using the middle mouse scroll wheel. Then I'm going to go back to GVU, then I'm going to press lock, okay? So again, that's dependent on your keep binding. Right there where we have a lock. So I'm going to drop the bomb away. Now let's see whether get a lock on target let's see if we hit that target it's moving mind you and there we are see we missed now that's the trouble when you're trying to drop a GBU on a moving target this target has stupidly stopped maybe we put a little bit of damage because it was kind of near the target okay a lighter target like an ifrit which this is I'm gonna drop another bomb away a lighter target like an Ifrit, potentially there could be some splash damage there. Maybe the splash damage from the GBU damaged its tyres, so maybe that vehicle is immobilised now. And there we are, bang, we have destroyed the target. So now let's change up, we're going to release UAV controls. Let's go back to our other Greyhawk, our loitering Greyhawk, okay, this guy right here. Let's connect on this, let's go control gunner, and let's actually ensure that that target is destroyed. And there he is, target destroyed. 
So that's how you can use a combination of two drones to actually eliminate your target. So that's my mini drone tutorial guys, hope they've been helpful, just how to get them up in the air and how to destroy stuff. I uh, have more tutorials about things coming up soon, if there's something else that you'd like me to cover, something that you're not sure about, something you don't know how to do, whether it's flying, piloting, loadout, vehicle control, all these different aspects, put it down in the comments below. If I think it's something that people will find interesting and useful, I'll try and cover that. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time for some more Armour 3.